Our first example for the thermodynamic process where the volume stays constant, isovolumetric process, starts with a gas in a container, volume constant, initial temperature at 293 Kelvin. There are five moles of gas in a container. Uh, it's a diatomic gas. The initial pressure is one atmosphere, and the final pressure is three atmospheres. And so typically what we want to find is we want to know all the uh, state variables in the initial condition, we want to know all the state variables in the final condition, we want to know the work done by the gas, the heat added to the gas, and the change of the internal energy of the gas. So we're going to need two equations. Typically you want to have the equation PV equals nRT, and you want to have the equation that the change in internal energy is equal to Q minus W, the heat added to the gas, minus the work done by the gas, also known as the first law of thermodynamics. It's also not a bad idea to go ahead and do a diagram, a PV diagram of the process. So in this case, here's pressure, here's volume. We start at initial pressure of one atmosphere, final pressure of three atmosphere, and the volume is constant. So that is going to look like this. We go from the initial state to the final state. So this gives us P final, and this here gives us P initial. We know that's one atmosphere, and we know that this is equal to three atmospheres. All right. First thing that jumps right out at us is if this is a isovolumetric process or an isochoric process as we said in the old days, uh, then we know that the work done is equal to zero. So we can say work is equal to zero, which means we have solved for one of those variables. Also in this case, we know the initial and the final pressure, and it looks like we do not know the initial and the final temperature. Now I think there's one thing else that we need to know, otherwise we're going to have problems solving this equation, we probably need an initial volume, temperature, oh no, we don't need it. Ah, I just realized I did give the initial temperature. So initial volume is something we're going to have to solve. We're going to use the equation PV equals nRT to find the initial volume. So V is equal to nRT divided by the pressure. And of course, since we're looking for the initial volume, we're going to need the initial temperature and the initial pressure and uh, let's plug in the numbers. So uh, N is equal to five moles. R is 8.315. The temperature is, uh, and you know, I'm getting a little lazy here. It might not be a bad idea to write in all the units. So you can see how the units cancel down. So this is five moles. And R is 8.315 joules per mole times Kelvin. The temperature initial is 293 Kelvin. Always convert temperature to Kelvin degrees or the problems are not going to come out correctly. And then the initial pressure is one atmosphere or 101,300 Newtons per square meter. And so that means that your volume is going to be in cubic meters because moles cancel out, Kelvin cancel out, Newtons per square meter divided into joules actually gives you cubic meters. And let's see here, we have 5 times 8.315 times 293 and divided by 101,300 equals, and so we have initial volume of 0 0.12 meters cubed. So we have calculated the initial volume that is now known. We also already knew the initial temperature because that was given. Now, of course, since the initial volume has to equal the final volume, then this is also equal to V final. And of course, then that's known as well. So now the only thing left to do here, as far as the state variables is concerned, we need to find the final temperature. All right, so we're going to use this equation, PV equals nRT, solve it for T. So that means that T is equal to PV divided by nR. And since we're looking for the final temperature, we need the final pressure and the final volume. Let's plug in those numbers. Final pressure, three atmosphere, three times 101,300 newtons per square meter. Final volume, the same as initial volume, which we just calculated, 0 0.12 meters cubed, divided by the number of moles, five moles, and divided by R, which is 8.315, uh, that's joules per mole times Kelvin. And 
when we plug all that into our calculator, what do we get? Times 101, 300, uh, times 3, divided by 5, divided by 8.315 equals, and we have a final temperature of 879 Kelvin. All right, so now we found the final temperature. Now, just as a check, is the final temperature higher than the initial temperature? Initial temperature was 293, final temperature 879. Does that make sense? Well, if you put the isotherms on a PV diagram, they look like this. We know that in this direction is high temperature. In this direction, it is low temperature. So you see when you go up, or to the right on the PV diagram, the temperature of the gas will indeed increase. So a higher temperature looks like we're in the ballpark. All right, now what else do we need to know? We need to know the heat exchange and the change in the internal energy of the gas. Now, when we use the first law of thermodynamics right here, we can write that the change in internal energy is equal to heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. And since the work done by the gas is equal to zero, because this is an isovolumetric process, we know that these therefore are equal to each other. So we can say delta U equals Q equals N C sub V delta T, because in this particular process, the volume stays constant. So we use the C sub V. That means the heat capacity of a gas when the volume stays constant. Plugging in the numbers, we get 5 moles. For a diatomic gas, this is a diatomic gas, the C sub V is 5 halves times the gas constant, 5 over 2 times R. And the change in the temperature would, of course, be T final minus T initial. And so this is equal to 5 moles times 5 over 2 times 8.315 joules per mole times Kelvin, and multiply times T final, which is 879 Kelvin, minus temperature initial, which is 293 Kelvin, and with a calculator, see, minus 293 equals, then we multiply that times 8.315 times 2.5 times 5 equals, and, wow, that's quite a bit. This is equal to 60,907 joules. That is, therefore, the change in internal energy, which is equal to the heat added to the gas. So now we also know Q, and we know delta U, and we solved the entire problem. So you can see in these thermodynamic processes, usually by using the PV equals nRT and the delta U equals Q minus W, and the knowledge about what's specific about this specific thermodynamic process, you can pretty well figure out anything you need to figure out. Any of the state variables, initial or final, or the work done, heat added, and the change in the internal energy of the gas.